see our team working hard to bring you an accurate forecast every day, but there's a lot that goes on behind the camera that you don't see at home. Here's a breakdown of everything that happens before the weather gets to you at home. Stand by for Marissa. Now, your first forecast with Chief Meteorologist Marissa Walzen. Well, today we have had plenty of fog out across the area this morning. Here's the forecast from your vantage point. Tonight will be dry. You can see on Stormcast, it has a couple high thin clouds by about 7 o'clock. But before the weather gets to you, <laughs> there's quite the lengthy. You can see this section where the jet stream is. Complicated. Huge area of cloud cover out there. Process. To forecast weather, you need to know what's happening now both on the ground and in the air. This weather balloon will reach an altitude of 100,000 feet, three times the height of a commercial airliner. We care about what the temperature is and the relative humidity is and what the winds are like at the surface where we're standing right now, but we also need to know what those conditions are like up aloft, all the way up towards outer space. Tyler Kranz is a meteorologist at the National Weather Service in Portland, where they are in charge of launching these balloons. The weather is three-dimensional, so we need to have observations um, as high up as we can go. This balloon will carry a device called a radio sun, which will gather critical information about what's happening right now in the atmosphere. So this is able to measure pressure, temperature, and relative humidity. Ground observations are gathered at weather stations such as this one at the Salem Airport. They are called Automatic Surface Observation Stations, or ASOS. We have a lot of automated surface observing stations. Those stations measure all of that for us. And then we have a good sense of what's going on right now. Now that we know what's happening on the ground and in the air, all this weather information gets funneled into supercomputers. All of that data gets ingested into numerical weather models, which we can then use to help us predict the weather. Next step, all these forecast models are available for our weather team to use. We begin our day seeing if what we forecasted yesterday came true. I start forecasting the moment I wake up because I, I want to know when I wake up, is this what I forecasted the night before? And if it's not, well, what is going on? Then we see what's happening now, both at home and hundreds of miles away. The satellite really tells us it's our eye in the sky, for example, a good way to put it. Uh, of seeing what's going on uh, out there really just across all of uh, the world and definitely here in Western Oregon. Now that we have a solid understanding of what's happening now, we can look at computer models. Our job is to interpret the models. And so the reason that we need to look at all the different weather models out there is because obviously some are going to be right, some are going to be wrong, and it's then our job to take a look at what they're showing and choose and think which one's going to be the most right. Models, you know, usually do a good job with the timing of the storm. It can be off a couple hours, but what they do a terrible job at doing, for example, is when a storm comes through, it brings us rain. The next day, they'll have us be very sunny from the start of the day. But I have learned over being here for many years that that rarely happens. If we have rain move through and then the rain is done by, say, dinner time that uh, the day before, we have clear skies at night. We're not going to have the sunshine in the morning. We're most likely going to have fog. Now that we've looked at all of the forecast models, the next step is to make our computer weather graphics. What we strive to do is break down all the complicated science into a way that's easily relatable to you. Yes, we know all the science and all that stuff, but being on TV, the, the thing that we always try to accomplish is how do we communicate this to viewers so that people can understand the forecast. Now that our computer graphics are made, it's time to come over here to the 3D weather set. You'll notice that there is nothing behind me, but with one click of a button, Bam, I get a weather map right behind me. And just like that, the forecast gets to you at home. Weather forecasting will never be perfect. Right now, it's estimated that a three-day forecast is about 85% accurate, but with the help of more real-time surface and upper air observations, forecasts can be improved in the years to come.